30 seconds. And then also if I don't uh, click the clicker so much, that was what I was guilty of last time. Um, well, we're wicked live on the YouTube. <laughs> that was, I didn't realize it was so centered on you. Hi, uh, Landon, and hi, YouTube. Uh, Emily Cornelius is here. Uh, that's sweet, Emily Cornelius. And we have a wicked cool guest today, Landon Melendez from uh, a, an outstanding and prestigious community college located in the heart of Denver. And um, what we're here for is introduction to virtual event production. We're on step three, uh, uh, if you're following along. If you purchased the course, you met Gladys, our cashier, uh, Landon. Uh, uh, Gladys probably took care of your VIP comps and such. She won't wear a mask uh, no matter what we ask her to do. So uh, either way, she likes to thank our VIP customers. She's wicked good about that. Uh, Stacy Sanders uh, can't be here this week. Uh, but she's the uh, executive director of Elevating Connections, the charity that we talked about in this production. Um, and then Landon, that's you. Uh, I think I, I pray to God I spelled that right. Uh, it's important to Gladys to thank the VIPs. So um, we'll talk about elevating connections and we've been talking about them, Landon uh, and Emily in the last two versions of this class. Elevating Connections is a charity I work with where uh, they can put on connecting events for youth separated from their siblings by foster care. So, um, that's, uh, you know, we'll talk a little, we've talked about them plenty before. stacy has been very eloquent about it and I'll speak about it later during the old uh, YouTube. Landon, if you've never been, this is uh, the Comedy 101 Virtual Event Center. I, I'm the one who cuts the lawn. I've explained previously, I get out of square and everything, but I just, that's where I sink all my para money into Landon, just, my all of our sweet nice retirement. beautiful <laughs> love so, it located right here uh, and so yeah uh, uh, i'll try to show you some of my virtual classrooms and and whatnot um but we're pretty good for hosting virtual events and we donate 10 percent of any of our uh virtual event fees uh, to elevated connections and that's been something that helps sell a lot of tickets and Previously, Stacy and I spoke about that. Uh, so uh, we're talking throughout the whole uh, series of online classes. You can get them at comedy101.chuckroy.com, my website. Um, we embed these YouTube videos inside the article. So go to step one, getting started with your virtual event and learn about step one, where we gather information. And uh, students at our community collage, Landon, are learning that step this week. They put together their own general information sheet uh, for a virtual event. Just a simple organizing uh, document. And we wrote a few examples here. And then step two, last week, we did virtually effective pre-production. Uh, this week is production. Uh, so you can go to the blog article, producing successful virtual events. And you'll see this video located right inside the blog article. And um, what do you do after uh, you successfully produce a virtual event? You drink uh, or celebrate however you like. But we also say thank you and a bunch of other cool tips about how to wrap up your virtual event. It's called post-production. And then evaluation. Uh, so we're trying to learn how to put some event metrics. So charities like Stacy, uh, she can evaluate things like gross profit margin or uh, land in an uh, improv troupe kids from the school if they want to form their own event. Uh, hopefully they can walk away with some basic tools to figure out, did they uh, make a little bit of money ding, ding, with uh, their event, if that was their goal. So uh, we'll be staging the virtual pub theater battles. That's what Landon is here to talk about today. Uh, Landon, I'm just going to recap what we've learned. And then uh, I believe that's when we'll uh, be able to speak a little more eloquently about the virtual pub theater battles. These, this is little Annie Jokely. Uh, uh, the virtual pub theater battles are Landon, uh, Annie's an avatar for, uh, and we've learned this in the previous courses, um, I, I hosted a, a virtual poetry jam, a poetry slam essentially for the, and they performed by the kids at Stacy's charity. So, it's youth separated from their siblings by foster care. And some of them are 
emancipated from the foster care system. So over the age of 24, there were 224 youth uh, this year up to June or I believe uh, March of this year, uh, a, a youth emancipated from the foster care system without a permanent home. So we focus directly on like, what if one of those youth performing in the virtual poetry jam ever got the idea like, I wanna put on my own virtual show from Zoom and uh, I can do that. And we believe, yes, they can. And the metaphor for this is the virtual pub theater battles. So it's something I came up with uh, right before we went to the Kennedy Center which uh, I brag about the award all the time. We'll, we'll, we'll brag about it later, I swear. We'll play Find My Kennedy Center Award in a few of the slides. But um, right before then, and I think we even chatted about it, there's a, a, a concept of pub theater. And I thought after seeing what uh, we did at the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival, where you coach things like devising a play, which we're gonna talk about today, um, but seeing the uh, theater students put on one X, I was like, oh, we're gonna do one pint plays. And so that's where we're at. And I sort of shipped that off to you and you wrote a, like a pretty brilliant thing. So I took your brilliant thing and made it into some slides which are less brilliant, but maybe very funny. And um, so I'll take us over to the virtual education uh, center and we'll get, um, I'm clicking this, Clicker, I can hear it, uh, so embarrassing. Uh, Landon, this is where I plan things like the lesson. This is my writing room at the Comedy 101 Virtual Education Center. Uh, happens to be my Kennedy Center Award, uh, the American College Theater Festival, Atha Award for Innovative Teaching. I brag about it every week, uh, probably because the boss said brag about it. So um, there it is. We brag about it in the Apocalypse Comedy Show. This is the exact same scene and backdrop every Sunday. Emily's on that show. She, you know, knows it. Like we tease about it or whatever. Uh, but uh, um, this is my. If you if we need a private consultation or you want to do some one on one coaching, this is my private coaching room. Uh, you know, you might have something like this landed to teach acting. It's similar to your office at the community prestigious community college we work at. And this is my lecture hall, uh, Gold Leaf. It's uh, sort of in my rider. Anyway, um, we're, we'll get right into the production and we're at step three. Uh, I'm, I'm, you get the joke. All right, so step three <laughs> of production, we're getting right into, uh, 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 oh boy, uh, I have Annie. This is her, this is her total idea. And we want Annie to figure out what can she do. And, and we're going to speak sort of at this level. Um, and I'm going to bring you in sort of now, Landon. Um, uh, I want to ask you and sort of remind you about this avatar. It, it, uh, youth from the Elevating Connections program, uh, I know about foster care through teaching at a community college. Uh, when uh, someone is doing great, you know, going to school, doing everything we like. If they enter the comedy class and should they mention foster care, sometimes I know like, buckle up, here comes some material. Uh, and, it, you know, offering stage time to them offers them a chance to really get stuff out of their chest. Uh, the uh, theater is far more popular than the comedy class. So, you know, playwriting and all of these things are available to a young person who say might work through a charity like Elevating Connections or say Urban Peak, go to a poetry workshop, perform on Zoom and then be like, I want to put on my own show. So that's Annie and that's sort of where we're at. So I, I want to just bring it in and, uh, you know, uh, we'll take Annie off the, I'm going to stop sort of, uh, oh God, uh, I've done a bad thing here. Is my microphone too loud? Is there too much going on around me? No, your Let me see if I can. Perfect. Uh, okay. And then I just need to learn how to stop sharing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. On the screen. <laughs> um, but either way, uh, Landon, if I can ask you to uh, 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 talk a little bit about yourself 
and what is playwright and devising, and I'm going to do my best to fix uh, the screens. Okay. Uh, so I teach theater appreciation and acting at the Community College of Denver, and I'm just starting my second year, and that's very exciting. And my background, I have an MFA in theatrical performance from Naropa University, which this year was the very last graduating class. And so that very distinct devising background has gone away, which is, I feel really grateful that I got the opportunity to, to learn these techniques. And so I also feel very grateful that I get to pass them on since the, the place where I learned them from is no longer doing so. So that's something. Um, so what devising is, is it's a group or it's a group of people getting together and creating a production without necessarily starting from script. Because it, in a traditional form of, of putting up a play, you have a, you have a script and then everybody has their job. There's the director, and then there's the actor, and then there's the lighting designer, the sound designer, and so forth. In devising, everybody gets to kind of have equal say over all of it, over what text goes in, or maybe no text goes in, over who's acting. If you're acting, perhaps you're directing, perhaps you're also deciding what the lighting looks like in the music or playing an instrument or all of those things. It just sort of like puts the entire production in the hands of the performers and all of the creativity is put on those people. And it could be students, it could be um, just a group of, of theater makers that feel like they want to make theater together. Um, you know, there's a lot of different types of people who devise work. Awesome. Uh, thank you. I, I'm halfway to solving the screen problem. I listen <laughs> okay. very well. Um, I'm going to loop in Emily Cornelius and okay. uh, get us right to a uh, first little backdrop or background. Uh, Emily, your theater experience, have you ever put together a play, creative writing classes and such? And then as I uh, finesse the screen issue, <laughs> we'll transition <laughs> to your idea for a uh, play. Yeah, yeah, I definitely come from uh, the performance background as well. I have uh, spent about seven years doing improv, um, starting in college and then now out of college. Um, I also am a stand-up comedian and while those aren't necessarily plays, um, I've got a lot of experience figuring out how to make it look like things are happening which is kind of a play. <laughs> Making it look like things are happening. Uh, I agree. Um, I agree. A, first, your material uh, is always sort of improvised. You, on the Apocalypse Comedy Show, will go from like room to room using props, staging props from room to room and such. So uh, let's start with uh, today, Emily. You, before uh, we before we went live on YouTube, uh, you, you had showed me that you had an idea for a ghost story and essentially just a candle. Uh, that was like a sort of your lighting idea. So is there any way, can you extinguish your lamp and we'll see if, or the white light above you and we'll see if what you look like candle it? Yeah, speaking of that, so my lighting choice inspired me even further because I was thinking about, um, I don't know if I like this, it's very dark. Right, so uh, what, Elena, we had talked, and I'm gonna get to, I think I'm gonna re-survive these slides, uh, but I'm well prepared if we you know, can just discuss. Uh, when we came up with some criteria for uh, the like one pint plays, you essentially said we got to come up with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then a great list of questions, which I have, it, you know, uh, but we basically got to beginning, middle, and end. Any tips there if someone's like, all I get is a candle and a ghost story, what do I do? So when you're thinking about a beginning and you're thinking about an end, those can be incredibly simple. It's it, all it is, is it's how does this piece begin? Um, it could be, if we're doing it virtually, does the camera start with Emily, if we'll look at Emily, 
sitting with the candle or does it start with just the candle and then Emily comes on and then then things get going. Um, so that's what it is. Like, how are you going to begin this piece? Anything else that comes be, be after the beginning is the middle, right? Right. So that's all of the story, all of everything, all of the happenings that happen between the beginning and the, and the end or the middle, right? So right. The, in, the beginning is just that, how does it begin? And then at the end is the opposite of that. How do you get everybody out? Like normally it's gonna be, how do you get everybody off the stage for the curtain call, right? right. Um, so how, so if for this, would Emily decide to leave the candle and then, you know, let the, the go off of, go out of frame and leave just the candle? Or does she want to leave herself they're being seen and that's I, she has choices and there's lots of other choices what if you want to like make some fancy thing come down we have like like what if chuck's avatar came in that's about to clap and laugh what if that one came in like there's a, there's so many different things that could happen it could be something that's um animated or anything you want it just needs to be the way things end right you can't just leave it open it it's leaving it open-ended people are sort of like well is that it like is that when I'm teaching devising I have everybody say I begin and I end so that we know where the middle is and where that way it differentiates the beginning and the end for the audience right the the performers know where it is the audience doesn't always know so we have to have a very specific beginning and end and then whatever happens in between is all of the things I totally, I have an idea. Okay. Sorry. I just, I, I, I was almost there. Uh, if I cover- You have a light bulb over your head. Yeah, right. If I cover up You're the gonna... hook with my hair, then. <laughs> 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 um, that's, I'm going for that. I want to get to this because like I'm being silly for a second and then Landon, I'm going to coming back to you and then Emily, uh, you know, back to you. Uh, because uh, while well, the day before we stage the virtual pub theater, we're doing, uh, I'm producing Elevating Connections virtual dinner, which is not a night of pub theater, but also has a beginning, a middle and an end. And yeah. so Landon, any sort of just tips for anybody like at work, we'd cut the <laughs> teacher nerds would call it ideation, you know, like we could definitely charge a lot of money for a workshop on ideation. Uh, so if people are trying to change their work meeting, if they're trying to present a, a virtual event, their, their charity fundraiser suddenly has to go virtual, what can they do again, like quickly or, you know, sorry, beginning, middle and end? How do they how should they be thinking about beginning, middle, and end, if you don't mind? Well, there's some. There's one more thing that just popped into my head, and and it's something from my psychology class, and and like study techniques. Usually, when you listen to a lecture or people people in general, when they're listening to something or they're reading something, they remember how it begins and they remember how it ends, but they don't always remember the middle, right? So right. if you're thinking about if you're going to have a strong start to that, maybe you're going to say something that whatever it is if it's a virtual meeting for a business or this example that you gave if they maybe want to say something about what it is they're trying to get everybody to on board with what is, is it a beginning. marketing campaign is it in a marketing campaign talk about that or give us a taste of what that looks like they can make it a performative thing maybe right. it's um a conversation or just a way that you kind of catch the the audience's attention. And in that case, it would be the, if it's a business meeting, then it'd be if the fellow business folks. Six, I don't know. I know. Six <laughs> people on a Zoom, or if it's uh, at the Celebrate dinner where right. the tickets are $50, the people mm -hmm. want to donate to the charity. We were there last year and it inspired all of these things that are happening through this online class. So you know, last year it was at a golf course, a beautiful thing. Now we got to replace the chicken dinner that <laughs> people go to. If you're in the world of charities and bidding on stuff, you know what I'm talking about. And that you maybe go to a lot of those and it, good for you. It, it's, you know, yeah. 
where else do you get bath kits and give to somebody you love? Uh, so uh, that's sort of what I was driving at is to allow people who might be following along on this uh, that, that have been following Stacy talking about the virtual event. Uh, but uh, you know, now we're gonna just sort of focus on the highlight, the event we're trying to produce a virtual pub theater. And how do we go from ideas to you know, an actual production. So Emily, I, I noticed you sort of, I think you did your thing and it looks like you're, you know, back and uh, is there any sort of progress? Are you in a complete panic? Uh, what's the status of our artists? Well, you know me, I um, do see a therapist for anxiety and it's not working, but <laughs> um, what I thought about is, wow, boy, does this look romantic. Um, boy, does this look kind of remind me of a date, something. What other kind of ghosting is there? The kind where you never speak to someone who you once um, maybe sent a photo to. <laughs> and maybe, um, maybe there's some sort of snooty waiter who is serving you on this date or there, that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm going to be a lonely, forlorn, um, unrequited, hopeful, romantic, sure. And then um, there's just a super awesome, I love this. Uh, very accepting French waiter. Are you able waiter. to see like, like uh, the contrast of the black mustache to the white light is really I like it um, and it it just clearly is a second character without anything more difficult than holding up the mustache and going probably en français or some sort of snooty European accent and then maybe wiggling it a little bit and that if you uh, if you go uh, I'm trying I'm pointing like this, but I'm trying to figure out how to direct and frame you. If your head goes to the right, yep, uh, and up a little bit, uh, if that character exists in that realm up there, uh, the top right third or whatever, uh, yeah, then around that area, and then your other character exists closer to the light, so... Uh, Boom, you're, you're now, yeah, now you have like two different spaces to play characters. Um, so uh, I'm really thrilled with that. Uh, Landon, uh, anything to add or I'm gonna, I've recovered on Screenville and want to, I'm gonna, I'm excited about this. Um, this is where I've got, I'm at Emily as far as uh, Virtual pub theater meets- I can't hear you very well, Chuck. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry, How's, is that better? Yeah, I don't know what, yes, that's better. I keep talking far away from the microphone and you know, yeah, I keep turning away from the microphone like this and I'm a rookie, you know, clearly in charge of teaching the intro to virtual events. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, no, I think you asked me about Emily's, um, what Emily was presenting. I love the idea of having the space where the waiter talks and then there could be another um, person over here in the corner, but you could also have a third person down below if she want, really wanted to go all about it and she's going, she's sold on this date idea and she's got two people. So she, they, you have one in either lower corner of the, of the camera, like my hands are, and then the waiter could kind of live up here in this area. So you have all of that covered. Uh, and also I was wanted to say that the mustache almost looks like it's a draw, like an animated drawn on something with that okay. lighting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look real. It's kind of really interesting looking. Well, it's comedic. It, it's certainly uh, not uh, dramatic. I'll say that. I like, I really like what you said about the third person. I think that you could even um, involve the idea of this being online um, and that third person could be someone um, that is being video called or on speakerphone or texting or whatever it is. I think that could be really cool. You could play with the voice component that we're able to use the chat box 
Um, Absolutely. That's a like great that. idea. That's well, a wonderful I, I, idea. Yeah. Too, just uh, having, uh, that's having, definitely, mm -hmm. you know, back to like what is accessible to Annie, her brain, uh, the folks in this mark, uh, like that we're speaking of going to be re really thinking about all kinds of crazy tools to or fun tools to use. Uh, um, this is what I was working on. I'm sorry. It was uh, for virtual pub theater. Uh, uh, at, I, I just envisioned some version of the curtain coming up and making a black box theater out of the announcement space. Uh, uh, you know, so this might be for pre-show or whatnot, mm -hmm. but uh, it's how I had organized, uh, say, your thoughts about beginning, middle, and end, and mm -hmm. before the crash uh, had hoped to organize um, the, uh, these uh, thoughts. But you had really in the note you had sent me, and I'm hoping to sort of create as its own blog article uh, eventually with your uh, assistance, Landon. Um, it, you asked at the beginning, is the camera on or off? So that's a, that was a cool thing for people to think about. Is the actor on stage or off? Uh, we You reviewed set design, um, and I, I kind of have a way of breaking these down, uh, but then you asked, uh, and you mentioned this very eloquently today, what transitions the character from the beginning to the end. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, at the end, what I, this is what I really liked is like, what is the final image you want to leave mm -hmm. your audience? That word made me think of these slides, but I, I know for someone who's cinematic, they're gonna hear that word and think uh, uh, video wise maybe, and someone who's theatrical might be thinking of uh, walking off stage like and then just you know totally pulled that off she blew out the right. candle and exited i was so. just very dramatic right. yeah that was great i like that i mean that's definitely one way to end that um you, another way you could have done that is you could have somehow if you had some support you could have had the camera kind of dolly into the candle or anything right well as you snuck away i mean that's if you have some support and it's not just yourself or you could you could do it yourself if you have your camera and then you, if you have your laptop or whatever you're looking at and then it just sort of comes to you dollies you to go. you on your yeah. own yeah you go. right it's the uh, that's the you you we're using the film word dolly and mm -hmm. you're showing how just pulling your computer did that um for me i guess it's you know, pulling this in, uh, right? Uh, and uh, Emily will offer examples and such. Um, and that's what I like is we're thinking, you know, artistically about the camera. Uh, <laughs> for students in, you know, the college class where I teach, it's folks were talking about stage managing. So, what are you thinking as a stage manager? You know, could you assist someone performing a one pint play and learn how to run the Zoom? and also mm -hmm. be the one doing the camera moves and such. Um, Landon, we're, we're, I'm gonna try and get back on track here. I think we're back on track because you also offered some really specific criteria uh, for us to judge a one pint play. Um, and so uh, the, the first piece of criteria was three specific scenes. Uh, I'll get the rest of the criteria say, uh, uh, up on screen, I, I, I hope. Um, now I see it's it, it's it's not moving on the Zoom. That's oh, I'm in technical hell today. Um, <laughs> it's always. I feel like it's always. Right on uh, one screen. Perpetual. Screen, my connection is unstable, so that's uh, where I'm at. Uh, that happened to me in school yesterday at, on campus. The connection was unstable in the classroom. And I was like, how can that be? We are in school. That does not make sense, but okay. Right. Uh, well, uh, some of the uh, say online comedy clubs do a great job in their description of saying, hey, it's a Zoom show and mm -hmm. you get Zoom technology. Like this is, uh, you know, I created this course you know, it's still in a, a, obviously a work in progress. Uh, the whole purpose is to be able to come back to these blog articles, add new YouTube videos and such. This one's fine. Like this is what production and rehearsal is like. And you just motor through things like a Zoom stall and such. Uh, either way, uh, the 
criteria outlined uh, that you added, Landon, was uh, three specific scenes. So Emily will find out you feel like you have that. Um, two transitions. I love that when you add things like criteria. Now we know what a one pint play really could be in terms of evaluation for when judges go like, what makes a good one pint play? Uh, a defined theme. I like that. Uh, um, that uh, what it. It, what translates to other events is you can sort of put together your own criteria. Um, I like this, Landon. You said think of at least two lighting sources. So, uh, <laughs> Emily, uh, I know you have gove lights, uh, like uh, I'm learning to explore. So, potentially in a in a future version of the candlelit production, you'll be thinking about how to add the second light, or is can you just turn on the room light or whatnot? Um, uh, sound, music, sound effects. So as a, as a producer, you're going to want to think about adding that. Scenery. So uh, what, what is the setting and such? Um, and then I like that you said a script or text written by you uh, that you should act in it and that uh, we we'll want to see costumes and props. So um, Emily, uh, do you need a moment to write your one pint play or um, can we cruise through a little bit of the evaluation? Um, um, I, the amount of script that I, I have written is about zero. Perfect. Well, uh, take a look at this one that I've written. And, you know, if you're watching the YouTube, what you can do is pause right here. Just, you know, uh, and, and go, I'm going to pause. Well, just, just, I'm sorry to interrupt really quickly. I'm sorry. I'm having like some, the screen keeps glowing black. So I don't know what. Right, we're having a Zoom uh, uh, meeting uh, fail. Uh, on the, yeah, I just want to let you know that if I don't respond, it's because I can't see you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just letting you know. But I can hear you. So that's hopefully... I don't know if it's my end or what's happening, but things are just sort of disappearing, which is weird. Okay. Um, just want to let you know. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Thank you for letting me know. And um, uh, I'll, I'll try to do my best to read what's on screen and uh, walk us through it. Um, so my idea for uh, one pipe play, uh, especially for these productions is uh, uh, old play I did for the One Bear Theater Company, which was a silly thing I did at an open mic. Uh, and this play is called, Jenny, Please Don't Go Through That Door. Okay, <laughs> so um, I took that one play and it's really just a stupid play based off a sound effect. Um, and I applied the principles you laid out, Landon. So um, I thought about the beginning and an actor enters uh, is, I, I knew that uh, in the middle, there's a warning, essentially what happens. Uh, the actor goes, Jenny, please don't go through that door. Uh, then there's a sound effect and um, a, a splash. Uh, so, uh, and on my screen landed, epic fail, the word splash isn't showing up. Oh, I can't wait to see what YouTube does. Uh, to the six people following on YouTube, you know, I'm sure you're having a thrill. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, I lost. I can't hear him at all. I lost Chuck. So I lost Chuck. A show of that, uh, just sort of one, like one little play at a time. I can do a play and then introduce someone for a longer, more dramatic play. But uh, that's what I'm thinking of these. And I think we might have lost Emily. Uh, we're having a Zoom. What can you do? Uh, so uh, I'll answer the next questions you laid out, Landon. Um, what am I going to do with the camera? Uh, so I like that the camera will be on center. Uh, I want to have some sort of a hallway. I'll probably use some sort of imagery, like a, a photo of a mansion, um, a uh, um, door, and uh, using something like PowerPoint and 
slides, like you're saying, Landon, have continue to zoom in on the door and then get to a very rich person hallway. Um, and I'd love to figure out how to have some version of a door opening on screen, but I don't know that that's important right now. Uh, I know the actor is off stage, and I know that we're in some sort of a fancy hallway. Um, so, Landon, uh, what can I do if I, you know, want to get rid of this? Uh, maybe use a blank wall like Emily is using, and this little lamp here. Uh, I call him Lampy. And uh, how do I uh, take Lampy and start building a scene? Uh, if I want a fancy hallway, what would what could a you fancy do? hallway? So. Well, one of your best solutions to have a fancy hallway is to put up one of the virtual screens that you have an option for Zoom because that's going to be the best, most, I mean, and of course, it's also going to be a little bit funny. The more fancy it is, kind of like what you, your beautiful lawn at the in the front of, of the school, right? That beautiful lawn, something like that would be some, something that you can do. Let me see if I can mess around with mine just to kind of give you an idea. You do it too all the time, right? I know you yeah, use these. I you know what? I haven't done that. This is as far as I've gotten in the Zoom format. I attached to this chair, uh, trying to manage, you know, the screens and the entertainment and the guests. Uh, and this is probably the most comfortable I felt. You know, say uh, going to like in the. In the next uh, episode, I'll get over to the other screen and rehearse my one pint play. Um, right. Uh, what I'm, I'm just a, at the point of saying that the co-hosting and managing the Zoom and camera switching and presentations, and I generally sort of. Right. Well, another I, something that I know for sure that um, works really well is making sure that you have. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to really quickly while we're doing this, get a picture of a fancy hallway for my background because right now I'm in outer space or whatever. But um, if, you have a, if you have a green screen, if you have a green screen behind you, it, it, so rather than kind of, kind of like what Emily has, but if you, ha if you had like a sheet that was green, if you put that up behind you in your virtual background, it just like makes it pop even more. Like you can use it to your advantage so much more. And one thing that's really interesting about these is that you can stand back in them, right? Let me let me just sort of back up. Like right. you can be in space with these. You don't have to, you can interact with them in very, you, maybe your movement is a little slower, but you can interact in them. Okay. You can so, use them, you can really use them in ways right. like this. Um, other than that, I think you could find a place in your house that has a hallway and then decorate it just like you would um, for us if you were putting on a show in that room, right? You would decorate it. Maybe you'd have a sconce to hang on the wall or something like that. Like there's a lot of different choices that you could make, but they could also just be really simple choices. Right. If you're going to represent a hallway and you don't have a hallway, you can go the old fashioned way and use text or dialogue, right? I'm going down a hallway, blah, blah, blah. And here's right. my flashlight. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm coming back to the real world. Let me see. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear you again. We lost him. I know. Uh, which is fine. You know, it's fun for me. I, I look forward to it. Like, look how Emily solved her, like, the problem. She just, you know, like, has a very cool, simple scene. Um, so, uh, I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to cruise through the beginning of uh, Jenny, please don't go through that door. Uh, <laughs> and, um, I love that. The, the script. Uh, so the script is, I know there's an announcer um, and the announcer essentially says like the One Bear Theater Company and I think it's something like the, the Virtual Pub Theater Company presents Jenny. Please don't go through that door. And definitely has to use like the bassy, you know, dramatic baritone to, you, you know, get the uh, like audience to know like this is supposed to be a drama. And 
maybe uh, for sounds like some organ music or whatever, uh, like old soap opera. And uh, I like that you made me think about the camera and that I want to fade it up. So uh, then I know the actor enters. Uh, and then uh, the actor sort of will curtsy and bow and such. And then here's the middle is the middle, the actor goes, Jenny, please don't go through that door. And then there's a sound effects of a door opening. And then there's, uh, so that's the middle. I don't want to give away the surprise. Okay. So I know in the middle, I'm on center stage. Uh, the, the camera's on center stage, the actor's on center stage. So it's me and I'm going to be looking. I, I don't need the door because it can totally be off screen. Mm -hmm. The sound effect does that. And then I'm in my fancy hallway. Um, so like you said, Landon, I, like, I don't even have a fancy hallway. I, it, that's not me. So uh, I could just take a blank wall and like... I have a dollar store fake silver tray. Just slap yeah. that against the wall. It looks like a mirror in the dark or whatever. Uh, and then the ending is, uh, it, you had suggested a final image. And mm -hmm. uh, mine is a sound effect of a splash. So Jenny's gone through the door and there's a splash. So whatever she did, She's fallen into a pool of water, essentially. Um, and that's the end. I'll curtsy, bow, I'll run off stage. And, uh, you, you know. Uh, uh, that's great. That's great. Um, one thing, one thing though, about your final image, you will have a final image no matter what it is. Whether Whatever happens before that um, splash happens will be the last thing that your audience sees. And that'll be the final image. Even if your sound effect is the last thing that happens and and that's the last bit of like information that they get and that's wonderful too but just be aware that you will have something that they see last there will be no matter what because we're watching and our eyes have the final thing so being mindful of what what you want controlling what it is that you want them to see is you have that capability and if you'd rather it was just maybe something different every time that's great too but make sure that you know what it is you know what i mean like and you're intentional with it Right. Uh, so, uh, Emily, I want to transition to you and then uh, see if we can't do uh, a, a little performance of where you're at and then we'll wrap up. Um, so, uh, Emily, where are you at in your play? Do you have a beginning, a middle, an end? Uh, yeah, I have a general idea. Um, as we kind of discussed before, I did come up with this today right now during this. Um, right. So I don't have 10 pages of dialogue. Um, but I do right. have a general pause. idea of what's going to happen. Let me pause you right there because I see Landon giving the thumbs up and this is for improv students like don't, you know, like put on, a, practice this at home. Just put on a one pint play, you know, just for you. Go yeah, ahead. well, I mean, I, I am a huge believer in physical and all improv of any type. And with this type of work, you have the opportunity to just try it. You know what I mean? And you can try it differently every time. And that's what's wonderful about devising is that it doesn't, even if you finally do have, think about Comedia del Arte when, um, they were traveling, they had like a little bit of a sketch of what the play was going to be, but they went on stage, they didn't have dialogue, they improv all of that, for the most part, you know, they knew who the characters were, they knew what, maybe a like rough, rough sketch, but they improv, they, everything was improv, and I think that it doesn't, for, for it to be a really fun piece, it does not have to have a lot of dialogue at all. Phenomenal, we're going to uh, yes and our yeah. way. Uh, awesome. ahead, love it, yes love, 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 love. Uh, you, I'm sorry, Emily, I spoke over you. Yes, you were saying yes and, um, or? Yeah, we're gonna yes and our way uh, through this. Okay. We're gonna explore it together. Uh, Emily, uh, Comedia del Arte, have you, do you have any background in Comedia? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit familiar in the sense that I, uh, they were these troops that traveled around, um, I believe it was Italy, correct me if I'm incorrect. Um, and they're really, you're getting they were, a, you're correct. Uh, awesome. Acting troops. 
and each person um, had a designated one or two kind of stock characters um, that they could then build a narrative around. This way it could be interactive or maybe molded to current events or things that were happening or that were specific to certain communities, depending on what town they were in um, and what time of year it was and what would make them the most money. <laughs> wow, there you go. Uh, so, uh, Emily, just so you know, uh, at work, uh, one of the professors said they did Comedia del Arte, and I said, well, what do you do for a living? Uh, <laughs> and that's why I'm probably going to get Oh, I bet he loved that. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you even get a smirk out of him? <laughs> right, uh, just a uh, look, uh, I didn't say it. I, I didn't say it out loud, I swear to God. Um, but it popped in my head and now I've said it. You know, the 50s had con men um, and Italy had comedian Del Artens, Del Artesians. Middle Ages, yeah. And this is not all Middle Ages stuff. <laughs> Right. So uh, what I want to get to just a little round table and then Emily find out a little bit more about your show. Uh, um, is the, the last idea I want to get across to viewers is uh, especially improv students who are brand new, like this is a perfect opportunity to just create a full scene. It has a beginning, a middle and end. There's some structure, some challenges, and after that, there's no script or anything. So, what would you, what would you? We lost Chuck again. Right, I lost, lost all Chuck. audio at the most important we part. We know that's a good thing is to put on workshops and be like, here, we, we're paying attention to you. Try some improv. And if, if the kid is like me and they're like, I'm perfect, I need to do a show, uh, then they like they set up a Zoom and off they go. Like, I don't ask permission, I just go. So if that exists, like what should somebody young or new to, to devising plays and such, what should they be thinking right at this moment uh, in creation of a play like this? Now that we've got some rules and structure, any last thoughts on how to assemble a pretty good play? I'm going to start with you, Landon. Any last thoughts on how to assemble? I, sorry, I didn't quite hear that last. Any, any, any last, last thoughts on how to assemble a really good or a pretty good play? Like just how to assemble a pretty good play, a pretty yeah, good like, play, uh, or good like, play, <laughs> right, or, or one that imagine. people want to watch maybe. Just, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. a good way to phrase it. Something somebody would want to watch. Right. Um, any last thoughts on how to assemble it? I think starting with an idea that you're drawn to. Um, that's usually what I, how I get my, get my students started is that if, if you've seen anything that you are drawn to, like, an image of, say you're walking down the street and you see a piece, a mural that really does something for you. If you can take some, what is it that's making that feeling? Figure out what that is, right? And then research all of that. And once you, so you're gonna figure out who the artist is that made this piece. Um, why are they making this piece? What are the so, social circumstances around that piece? Because every piece of art is connected to society in some way. Um, and it's always commentary it, or it arises from it in some way. So you'll research all of those kinds of things and then figure out what it is that's making you drawn to it and see if you can use it in your piece, whether it's a piece of lighting like or one little one little object that represents that mural like say maybe it's a mural of a heart and there's flames coming off it i don't know if you have like a little heart um i'm just gonna grab something because sure, i have something sure, here sure, if here's that. a little heart you see what i mean like a little yeah. you could use this in your piece this is a candle holder this could be central and this is a way in. This is gonna give you, you know the connection and when you have a connection around it and you build it, the audience is going to see that and the audience is gonna go with you and they're gonna buy in. Right, oh, I love that, I love that. It, 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 there's a few things that that makes me think about, especially like life on the road and joke writing, um, going to coffee shops and wanting to uh, like 
explore the neighborhood. And so uh, I would be looking at things like murals, um, but I didn't take to them quite like you're saying. I'm more of a Robert Frost, like road not taken kind of guy. So I like to look around the town and then be like, all right, if everybody works here, where do they go to lunch? Uh, uh, then, <laughs> like, is there, what about uh, on a comedic journey? Then I have some jokes about what I was doing or what might've happened during that. Uh, but uh, I really liked how you said, like, if I'm seeing a mural in that, it, it, on my walkabouts in the next day and a half while I'm trying to stage my own one pine play, what can I be doing to sort of see life and then take some inspiration and learn how to express myself artistically through some other medium besides comedy. You, you, uh, but maybe I'll be funny about it. So Emily, I wanna get to you. Uh, the, uh, you might be helping me stage the Elevating Connections uh, dinner, uh, virtual dinner uh, the night before the pub theater battles. You'll see some of the youth perform their poetry. It will speak to you. I'll cry. You'll have to cover. You'll be like, the bear is crying. I'm going to improvise and save the scene. And then we'll fundraise. We'll raise more money for them than we ever have. That's what we do. And then, um, I'm, you know what I'm doing. I'm recapping all of that stuff to just sort of drive one last question. Kid who performs at the Elevating Connections dinner and decides, I want to do something so simple as present my own theater show, my own poetry jam on Eventbrite. Um, any last thoughts on like idea creation? How do you get something done? How do you move from how do you move from I'm going to be a comedian to now I'm doing comedy or now I'm doing shows? Yeah, for me it was kind of uh, honestly I thought of a thing that I wanted to do or somewhere that I wanted to go, something that I wanted to be, and then I. Uh, researched all of the ways to get there. So if that means I want to write a song that has a certain feeling, I'm going to think about all of those feel things that get me to that feeling. That usually leads me down to a, down a path. If I'm writing a play, I'm going to big today. I lit a candle because it was the first of October. And I said, ooh, what about a ghost story? And then I thought about all of the things that had to do with a ghost story. And then when you're putting on a virtual event, you're getting together with other people in a field that you're interested in. You think about all of those things that you wanna do, people that you wanna be connected with, and you think about the avenues that you wanna get there. So whether that What's that Taking. final image? The, the, I like the way Landon. Uh, so let's get to your play um, and find out what we've crafted. You, it might be nothing, but it was still, which is so fine because you've been helping me deal with the. It, this has been a shit show <laughs> of, of a Zoom with so many tech failures, but what can we do? We, you know, it's been fun and a good conversation. Uh, so where's the beginning, middle, and end of your play? Uh, um, and before, I guess, do we have a theme yet or, or anything? Yeah. Like so I, uh, I think that this theme uh, for this story, this ghost story, is going to be the theme of ghosting aloneness um really really uplifting stuff over here and um but kind of like aloneness in community like you're surrounded by people whether you're in a restaurant talking to someone either virtually or in person um that's still that feeling of aloneness or abandonment so ghosted um perfect so um it, it, some settings could be, I, like it. Uh, I saw a commercial today for one of those virtual, like one of the new date, like one of those dating apps that has a new like video date, you, you know, so you can do your personality profile to be matched up with some people or selected to some people. And then um, uh, you can also, uh, you know, so I'm thinking that that's a pretty funny setting for for that is like they've been ghosted. Um, 
one of the characters could definitely be a ghost. Do you have any characters in mind? Uh, I know we previewed some, but have you settled on characters? Yeah, so what I was uh, gonna uh, think about doing was to be having a, a waiter, somebody who works at a um, restaurant. That person lives over here when they're talking. Okay. To this person that is on the date. And then um, there is a third element because in this play, because unfortunately I don't have any other actors, I am every single character. Uh, so if we uh, added an actor, say, you know, uh, Vaughn, uh, who was in the last episode, or myself, if I'm, you know, if I become the character, I go, oh, I'm Chuck, you know, and I'm here to date you. Uh, that's funny. I'm the gayest bear ever. Uh, but, you know, I've never, like, okay, so I'd be, what, it was making me think, like, one thing I forgot to cover here is, like, how to do camera switching and such. So uh, I'm using the spotlight feature going back and forth. So I can mute, I turn off my video. That's how I do it when my students are doing a scene is everybody turns off their video except for the two that are in the in the virtual thing. And then uh, it's yeah. just the two of you when you're speaking. Right, and then uh, there's some so Chuck, ways you, have you can to, uh, um, improve hide, settings. Hide non-video people, you, you have to hide them. Hide yeah. me. Um, so I'm trying to find that. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm Berna. <laughs> so uh, there's Emily, her scene, and then mine. Uh, can you, can you, hey, hey Chuck, can you use, the, push the button that says hide um, non-video participants? And then I'll go away. And so I'm not even there on the screen at all. wondering if I'm losing Emily to a brilliantly slow Zoom. Uh, and did I lose Landon? That's, uh, I don't think I, I was, I apologize. I had to plug my device in so I didn't die. Right, all right. Uh, so I'm uh, gonna try and draw us to a, uh, somewhat of a conclusion. Because uh, A, we've learned a lot, B, um, I think if we go any longer, the ceiling is going to fall in on me or something. Um, I'm having that kind of <laughs> luck right now. Uh, Emily, uh, uh, I think we've discussed the, sort of the beginning, the middle, and the end of your play. Um, any ideas for things like sound effects and whatnot? Um, would you? Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think if we continue to go down this route of maybe a date, maybe there's the sound of water pouring. Um, I like the sound of like awkward fidgeting and like playing with that during a date. Um, coughing is something I love to utilize um, when I feel awkward in real life. Um, and I think that the awkwardness or playing on, what, what was that? I couldn't hear you. Um, I think if that is considered a sound effect, if I have extra support here, maybe there's um, a fake dog barking sound, um, other things that would interrupt a Zoom siren. Right. And uh, Landon, just sort of use your idea of a, a video over whatever and thinking Emily about what Alex Bo does with video. Uh, I could sort of record a video of uh, black screen, but with my name, and put that on the Zoom. So it looks like uh, Emily is talking to uh, an empty script, like a, a someone who won't show their video or can't show their video. But I can yeah. be showing my video uh, or and talking over it, and then maybe even appear in that. Uh, in or just place. putting paper over it, so it's very obvious that it's fake. 
Mm -hmm. Somebody's mm -hmm. trying to hide their appearance. That could be fun. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I think it, uh, that helps us figure out sort of uh, lighting and uh, sound. What about a grand finale? I just, we'll get to an ending here, Emily. What, uh, what should someone think about, say, uh, to end something like the virtual pub theater battles? Uh, how will the audience know we've headed into the ending? Yeah, I think that um, what signifies uh, a change, at, like that transition is very important, whether that means the dimming of the light, like you would see in a real theater, the closing of the curtains, um, or a bow. Um, that's a very great way to signify an end. I think if I was going to make a bold lighting choice, like a candle, maybe um, the end is the blowing out of the candle, the absence of light, or the presence of a sound, like a siren or something like that. Um, I think for this, I, the idea of somebody walking off of stage and then this candle just going out, um, that right. sounds powerful to me. Chuck, I can't hear you if you're talking. It's, I think he froze too. Yeah, we're just having a grand old time. Um, oh. While we're waiting for him to unfreeze, I think I love that idea of blowing out the candle in the absence of light. And then Chuck was talking about using the um, splash sound. What kind of, a? because you're talking about some diegetic sounds. You were saying coughing. What are some other sounds you were saying that you would use uh, oh, for sound shot. effects? Um, uh, oh. traffic. So, uh, uh, soundbible.com is a website to get uh, the slamming of a door, yep. maybe. Yeah. And, and what about like, like dishes yourself. cluttering? Like yeah, clattering, or sorry, toilet clattering. flushing. Toilet flushing, of course. Uh, uh, it, it, <laughs> it, it's challenge yourself to almost go to soundbible.com, look for some, a search. And make sure you're choosing something Creative Commons and open license and and have at it. Um, and, um, you know, speaking of toilets flushing and adorable mustaches and, uh, you know, getting to a grand finale, uh, I think we've covered it, how to get to rehearsal and pre-production and what to do, like how to turn your idea into a show. Uh, next week, we'll go over how to evaluate uh, what to do between your rehearsal and your big production. Uh, so uh, I've got things to learn. What caused uh, some of the internet failures tonight? Um, and then compliments to hand out. Uh, so tomorrow, I'll have to send thank you notes to everybody who helped me riff and cover all the cool moments. Um, and then uh, the week after, we'll look at uh, return on, uh, we'll look at some metrics and such. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll find out how to evaluate, did we put on a good show? And then we'll actually stage, I'm gonna stage the virtual pub theaters on Saturday, October 17th, uh, 2020. And then we'll connect to everything in the YouTube channel. So you can just look in the YouTube details and you'll get links to the blog articles and where to see the show and such. Uh, Landon, I really enjoyed your conversation and your ideas about how to go from I want to put on a show to now I've got really cool theater. Um, so thank you for sharing. Uh, Absolutely. I'm happy to. Can you hear me? I have these yes. earbuds in now. Okay. I was trying to like make my hearing better. Um, yeah, no, thanks for having me. I think this is, I'm so excited. Hopefully I'll be invited to this, see these finals and You're see invited. what people come up with. And I really want to see Emily's piece with the ghosting. And I hope, I can't wait to figure out what sound effects she's going to use. She's got a toilet flushing. What about a rooster? I don't know. Do a bunch of weird <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love a rooster. Yeah, that's A rooster. It could be like all kinds of like a ghost. Yeah. Maybe like, somehow you levitate. I don't know. I don't know. Not don't that know. good at meditation. Yeah. <laughs> no, lev levitate. Yeah. Le like, oh, levi yeah. levitating. Cool. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having me, Chuck.
Thanks. Right. Nice to meet you, Emily. It was good to meet you too. All right. Bye. All right, everybody. Thanks for your patience. I'll see you all later. <laughs>